Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, December 11th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. And I'm Rob Dude. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, a crooked cop whines about being busted for rape. Then, what's rattling the cages of the GOP? After that, the new film that exposes tyranny. And don't forget that today is Troll ISIS Day. That's next. Sending a message to ISIS. <laughs> so bring that stuff over here. We'll show you how it's done, Roger. can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell, it removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. Well, if the establishment media is to be believed, a lot of people are really upset with Donald Trump for his comments about shutting the borders to any Muslims coming in uh, until the vetting process can be fixed. Of course, it depends on which poll you're going to read at a certain time of day. But uh, there is a poll that says a lot of Americans actually agree with Trump. And here we actually have a Texas imam who um, also publicly came out agreeing with Trump saying, we should have a complete shutdown of any Muslims entering the, the United States until further investigation can be done. Well, now he has actually been forced to resign for agreeing with Trump. And this imam says that more than 100 Houston, Texas area imams have also been asked to leave because of a political agenda. And he actually comes out and says that one of the board members who called him about seven o'clock at night and said, you're out, was someone who has financially supported Hillary Clinton. So there you go. Political agenda there. You can't be agreeing with Donald Trump, especially if you are a, a leader there, a religious leader there of the Muslim group. And now we have some more evidence coming out that Tashmeen Malik was trying to co contact Islamic militant groups a few years ago. Uh, they, they believe that possibly these groups just ignored her because they thought that they were going to be caught in a sting. Uh, but now they're also recovering data from digital devices, um, suggesting that they were actually planning to attack a location with even more people than the Inland Regional Center. They were planning an even bigger attack. And now they are trying to uh, see if there are any possible connections to Sohil Kabir. He was sentenced earlier this year to 25 years in prison because he was caught trying to recruit men to go to Afghanistan to kill U.S. troops. And it turns out that Farouk was in Kabir's social circle as this terror plot was being hatched in Riverside. And, um, you know, Rob, so this is what a lot of people are saying is that you really just don't even know what these social circles are. There's a huge problem with vetting these people. And obviously the NSA wasn't doing a very good job tracking these communications. Well, and we've had three agencies come out and say, we can't vet these people based on the information, especially people coming in from Syria and other countries that we really don't, uh, that we're not affiliated with. Uh, the FBI director, the director of the National Counterterrorism Institute, and Jay Johnson came out and said, we just don't have enough information to properly vet people. Right. But we're going to bring them in anyway. Yeah, bring them on in. Yeah. And, and obviously, I know that there was another organization that also could have possibly prevented this attack, but... That's true. Um, U.S. Customs and Border Protections, the National Targeting Center, was actually in the midst of an investigation. There's a whistleblower named Philip Haney 
back in 2012, he was pulled off of a uh, an investigation because he started, I guess, uncovering things they didn't want him to uncover. Well, they, I think they didn't want him to be racist. They didn't want him targeting uh, Islamists. That's what they're saying. That's also that's a very good cover story. But in the process of shutting him down his investigation, they deleted files which included um, organizations that were working together, one of which wow. had to do with Farouk's mosque. So wow. they knew that, they're, that they, they saw the ties coming together between these different organizations, and they said, shut it down. We've got an operation to run. Yeah. At least that's my opinion. Well, I've already reached out to try and see if this, this man will come on the show as well. I mean, I'd like, why would they delete that information? I mean, the NSA didn't delete any of the information that they've been illegally collecting on the American people. They say, oh, we're just going to hold on to that because they know at some point they're going to reinstate the program. Um, and that's because so the American people are the real target. It's not foreigners coming into this country that may want to do some sort of operation, some sort of terrorist act here. It's all about the American people. That's why you saw these reports in 2009 saying that we got to go after the gun owners and you know, returning veterans. That is the big threat to these people, not Muslims coming from other countries who may or may not be embedded, you know, ISIS individuals who are, who are coming in pretending to be refugees. Right. And so everyone wants to really go and attack Donald Trump or others who are not being politically correct about this whole thing. Hillary Clinton is taking the exact opposite tactic now. Um, she wants to drop literal love bombs on people. Exactly. Here's her <laughs> quote. We've got to do everything we can to weed out hate and plant love and kindness. She told a crowd of several hundred. This is out of the AP. As Trump rises, Clinton preaches love and kindness. Really? From this lady? Really? Is that what she said to uh, Gaddafi and all yeah. the Libyans? We're going to drop them some love, love and kindness bombs? Absolutely. And so this is what, you know, I mean, Donald Trump is right. We're in a war. And, you know, regardless of how you feel about him, unfortunately, we really are going to probably need a president who is prepared to deal with a World War Three type scenario. Right. And so here, this is how she's saying for us here, we just need to have love and kindness. And this is the way. Um, you know, it sort of reminds me of this next story uh, here in Austin, Texas. We have an open carry group that is going to be staging a mock protest or I'm sorry, a mock shooting. And um, people are going to be doing a counter protest. And it's the same thing. It's like we're going to stop terrorists with flowers and good vibes. Anti-gunners are planning a very pungent protest this weekend in Austin, Texas in response to pro-CCL activists staging a mock mass shooting, counter demonstrators will resort to waving dildos and mass farting. Yes, this is the self-defense equivalent of peeing yourself to stop a rape. With cardboard guns and fake blood, come and take it Texas and don'tComply.com are pitching a life and liberty event to end gun-free zones. The active shooter drill will take place near the University of Texas this Saturday, but this time, the shooter picks the wrong crowd. The planned event comes at a particularly tense time in the nation's gun debate, and Texas colleges and universities are debating how to implement the state's new campus carry law that will start next fall. But gun control advocates say this event is offensive, and so they're staging a mass farting and dildo waving counter protest. I don't want to talk to you no more, you empty headed animal food trough whopper. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Is there someone else up there we could talk to? No, now go away or I shall taunt you a second time. Well, that counter protest sounds like it stinks, Leanne. Oh, it's going to be amazing. But here's what Kurt Russell had to say when an interviewer was trying to corner him into saying guns are bad, we got to get rid of guns and talking about the disenfranchised white guys. Right. Because that's all that's out there. Uh, Dan Bedondi did a report where this lady said, oh, I'm scared of people like you because you go around and shoot people and, and blow things up. And, you know, these people are just oblivious to the fact that there are some people out there that are going to kill people no matter what. Yeah, and obviously the San Bernardino exactly. shooters did not fit that narrative. No, they didn't fit the profile. Uh, but, you know, it looks like they're protected. There's multiple witnesses saying three people were there. So there's a lot that we don't know about this shooting. But here's where uh, Kurt Russell just lays into this uh, interviewer here. Take a listen. Well, I, you can look. If you think that if you think gun control or something like that is going to change a terrorist point of view, I think you're like out of your mind. I think no. you're like, I think anybody is. I think, I think it's absolutely insane. Obama's you know. point was that the guys who are on the no-fly list, no-fly list because of terrorist mm -hmm. connections, can get a gun pretty easily. They can also make a bomb pretty easily. Yeah. So what? Uh, they can also get knives and stab you. What are you going to do about that? They can get cars and run you over with them. What are you going to do about that? 
What are you going to do about that? They didn't kill the people in San Bernardino. Oh, but they've killed others that way. Haven't they? Yeah. 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 So what are you going to do? Outlaw everything? That isn't the answer. So just when you think that, you know, America is a total lost cause, you have badasses like that coming out and speaking up for what everyone really knows, like reality. Right. You know, your laws are obviously are not going to stop terrorists. They're not going to stop criminals. And the White House has admitted, uh, at least the press secretary has, that the existing gun laws wouldn't have stopped these other killings. They just wouldn't have stopped them. So they can't keep making more laws because their laws don't work. And this is like the NSA, the way they set things up. They get all this information, they're scooping it all in, yet they can't stop any of these terrorist attacks. Right. You know, it was just a few weeks ago that they stopped the NSA program. And these guys have been radicalized, supposedly, since 2013. Exactly. In these, nobody in these knows. Terrorist circles, right. making contact with different groups, yeah. and talking about, you know, jihad at least since 2012. It's really oh, yeah. sad. It's, it's sad the amount of money we waste on these programs of spying on the American people and regular citizens when it could be spent elsewhere on, you know, space travel or something like that. Right. And that's why I appreciate with what Kurt Russell said, with, yeah. you know, so you're going to what you're going to do is restrict gun owners from being able to actually protect themselves. themselves. And he's like, no, 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 not stop them. Just, you know, make it harder for the bad guys to get guns. And it's just like, where is this liberal logic? Like the firewall there. Can we just it stems from the <laughs> same group that tells you to pee your pants if you don't want to be raped. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. Oh, my goodness. That makes me so angry. Now, today is actually National Trolling Day. So we're not trolling you with that, um, you know, the, the last story there with the hot topic there on the uh, mass farting rally that we'll be attending tomorrow. I will be there. Um, but we actually are seeing a lot of trolling going on online. There is a new documentary out. It's called Killing Them Safely. And it's a documentary uh, that is exploring the danger of tasers and how they ha can actually kill people. They're not, you know, a less lethal weapon. And so now taser employees are actually trolling this documentary with fake reviews. And <laughs> they're just, they can't spell apparently and using their real names. So these are not epic trollers. They, they're not doing a very good job. And in fact, this movie is now getting five stars on Amazon and things like that. So they've actually helped this movie. They're failing there with the trolling. And uh, Anonymous has announced today is National Troll ISIS Day. And so let's take a look at some of the Twitter, um, the Twitter trolling that's going on. Who can make the best meme? <laughs> These things are pretty funny. And they're using the hashtag Daesh bags. Daesh bags. So <laughs> stick around because we're going to keep on offending you right after this. During the Christmas holiday, back in 1913, Congress enacted a communistic centralization of your money, transferred to the control of an elite few. Communistic, you say? Well, the second plank of the Communist Manifesto states a heavy progressive or graduated income tax. The fifth plank states centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. Those planks have been long established in the United States, so it stands to reason that we are living in a somewhat communist country. Of course, all of the planks, if researched, apply to the current state of government in the U.S. in one way, shape, or form. For instance, plank number six centralization of the means of communication and transportation in the hands of the state. Of course, the FCC is all over the control of communications, not to mention the NSA and your friendly neighborhood fusion center, and a lot of socialist-controlled examples such as the Postal Service and the government's control of Amtrak and Conrail represents the government's hand being placed in the free enterprise cookie jar for the world to see. But that's only the beginning of where government-controlled transportation is heading. The Huffington Post reports, There's growing confusion about how would-be flyers from Louisiana, Minnesota, New Hampshire, and New York will board planes when provisions of the Real ID Act go into effect because their state ID and driver's license processes fail to meet federal standards. Passengers from those four states would likely need a passport or, in the case of non-citizens, immigration documents.